You're Jed Clampett. I'd know you anywhere. Jed Clampett, just like Mother described you. You more knows me? Well, we live just beyond the ridge from you, back home. Well, it's mighty nice to have somebody from back home drop in on us. And it's mighty nice to feel the firm, friendly grip of a real mountain man again. <laughs> come in, come in. Don't believe I caught your name. Uh, uh, Jones, Harry Jones. There's an article here concerning a continence man known to be operating in this area. So? His M.O., <laughs> That is police vernacular for modus operandi, which in turn is Latin. I know what modus operandi mean. I watched Dragnet for seven years. <laughs> Sorry, Chief. To continue, his M.O. is to prey upon rural types, especially those who have come into money, like the Clappets. He's particularly... Let's see that. Harry Jones, alias Herbie Jones, alias Herbie Brown, alias Herbie Brower. Came out to California and... Struck it rich, acquired a lot of property. But now my heart says, Herbie boy, go back to the land of your childhood. You said your name was Harry. Oh, it is. Uh, Herbie's my second name. The one mother always used to favor. And when I think of that, I think of home and mother. You all passed on, has she? Well, no, she's very, very sick. That's why I have to dispose of all my vast California holdings and hurry to her side. Now, uh, Mr. Clampett, how would you like to buy the Hollywood Bowl? <laughs> uh, where are you going? Well, I gotta go out and fetch Granny. She's, uh, she takes care of buying everything for the kitchen like pots and pans and bowls. <laughs> No, no, Mr. Clampett, it's not that kind of a bowl. The Hollywood Bowl is a vast open-air amphitheater, seats 20,000 people. What in the Sam Hill would I want with a place like that? What? Well, do you know how much money the Hollywood Bowl took in last year? Can't say as I do. Four million dollars. Is that a fact? That's right. Four million dollars? Yes, sir, Bob. What the Sam Hill would I want with a place like that? <laughs> You, uh, you mean $4 million doesn't interest you? Not especially. I already got more than I need now. Well, congratulations. <laughs> you just passed the test. What test? I just wanted to see if you were still that sweet, honest, ungreedy man that my dear mother told me about. <laughs> get get Clavin on the phone. As the bulletin says, he is particularly clever at selling public parks and monuments to these rural types. He convinces them that he's one of their own kind. Sorry, Chief, the line's busy. Tell me, Mr. Clampett, what do you like to do? I, I, what I mean is, what are your favorite pastimes? Well, I reckon uh, hunting, fishing, whittling. Well, then, the Hollywood Bowl is exactly what you need. I don't quite follow what you mean. Well, let's take Whitland, for instance. You know there are 20,000 wooden benches in that place? <laughs> Tired of whittling, you just turn on the water, fill her up, throw in a few trout, and you've got the best doggone fishing hole you ever saw. What about hunting? Huh? Why, in those hills surrounding the Hollywood Bowl, especially on Mulholland Drive, you'll find more wolves up there than you'll find in any place in this here country. <laughs> what do you mean, Buster? Ed, where are you? We're in here, Granny. Ed, can you get the top off of this? Oh, I didn't know we had company. Mr. Jones, this here is, uh... Of course. Granny, I'd know that face anywhere. Mr. Jones is from back home in our part of the country. His family used to live beyond the ridge from us. Jones? Jones? I recollect a family of Joneses that lived beyond the ridge. That must have been... They was horse thieves. <laughs> uh, different Jones. <laughs> yeah, I reckon so. Yes, I remember Mother always used to say... We must be twice as good to make up for the bad Joneses. <laughs> Mr. Jones here is wanting me to buy the Hollywood Bowl off him. Hollywood Bowl? Hollywood Bowl? <laughs> and this must be the young lady I've heard so much about, the lovely Ellie Mae. <laughs> hmm? A lot of stories I've heard about you, my dear, don't do you justice. 
You have a, a much more mature beauty than I expected. Me? Why, you won't stay unmarried long in Beverly Hills, my dear. I'm surprised some handsome young movie star hasn't already claimed you for his very own. Me? I'm going to tell him, Granny. Just let me take my time. Now, Mr. Jones, uh, this here is my cousin, Pearl Bodine. I'm charmed to make your acquaintance, my dear, Miss Bodine. It's Mrs., but I'm a widow. Pearl, you seem to know about Hollywood Bowl. Oh, yeah, Jed, I heard about it. It's where they have all that open our music and singing. Pearl here is right gifted at singing and playing and yodeling. Oh, Jed, I ain't neither. You are so? No, I ain't. Why, well, you sure are. I ain't. <laughs> Let her win, Jed. For once, she's right. Uh, Mr. Clampett, if I may, as owner of Hollywood Bowl, I become an expert judge of musical talent. And I wonder if I might hear Mrs. Bodine perform. Well, I could... I could yodel for you. Cut loose, Pearl. <laughs> Holy, holy, ooh, holy, holy, ooh, holy, holy, ooh. Yeah, there's no question about it. That voice belongs in the open air. Uh, theater. <laughs> Where 20,000 people can listen and enjoy it. 20,000 people would pay to hear me? Why, well, my dear, they would fight for the privilege. How much you reckon they'd pay? Oh, I'd say at rock bottom prices, at least $5 a head. Twenty thousand at five dollars a head? That's one hundred thousand dollars for only one night. Jed, did you hear that? I sure did, Pearl. Mr. Jones, looks like you got yourself a deal. Your troubles is over. You mean it? Yes, sir. With a moneymaker like Pearl singing and yodeling for you, you won't have to sell your Hollywood bowl. I won't. Have to. <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. <laughs> Hello? Uh, this is... Did <laughs> Mr. Jones call his lawyer yet? It's trying to get him now. Seems to have a little catch in his throat. He's hurt all the news, Granny. Ma's going to sing in Hollywood Bowl, huh? It ain't set for sure until he talks to his lawyer. Uh, but you've got to find a way to get out of those contracts. This woman is a tremendous talent. <laughs> well, she's the greatest yodeler since, since Caruso. <laughs> By George, I'm glad I'm selling the Hollywood Bowl. When a woman with the talent of Pearl Bodine can't play in my theater, then I'm through, you hear me? Through! I ain't going to sing in Hollywood Bowl, Mr. Jones. We're book solid, my dear, and I just got to honor those contracts. <laughs> but if someone else was to buy the Hollywood Bowl, he could make new deals. He could put in anybody he wants. Jay, it wouldn't do no harm to go look at the place, would it? Oh, I don't reckon there'd be no harm in that. Fine, I'll have my car sent around. Just no need to do that. Jethro can drive us all up. You got a car that'll hold all of us? Sure, bring it around, Jethro. Well, then, by George, let's go. You know, Mr. Clampett, there aren't too many millionaires who drive around in cars like this. Well, actually, my cousin Pearl deserves the credit. This is her. Shucks, this old thing. I've been after my cousin Jed to get himself a fancy, shiny new limousine. Yeah, boy, I sure would like to drive around one of them rascals. Well, once your once your ma's performing in your uncle's Hollywood Bowl, she'll be able to buy you a new car every week. What <laughs> diggity dog! Mr. Jones says when I commence to singing and a yodeling there, why, 20,000 people will be pushing and crawling at the gate. Yeah, trying to get out. <laughs> what did she say? Oh, she said that. Hey, Mr. Jones, what's that up there? Well, that's the entrance to Hollywood Bowl. Just kind of make a left there, boy. Well, let's see. Uh, right is the side where I carry my butt, guys. So left is... <laughs> right. Turn it, boy! Turn it! I'm going to throw in all these, Billy. 
Lynn's is part of the deal. Won't cost you a cent. <laughs> now, you'll notice the trees are all in A1 condition. Solid wood, every one of them. And loaded with sap, too. And this here is the famous traveling sidewalk. Takes you right up the hill with no effort on your part. Just stand still and ride. <laughs> Gives you a beautiful view of Hollywood Bowl. Now, isn't this wonderful? Saves wear and tear on the chew leather. And this is just one of the features of this wonderful investment you're making, Mr. Clampett. Come right along with old Honest Hank. Yes, like city folks, too darn lazy to even walk. <laughs> Say, incidentally, if you folks buy this here bowl, I'm going to throw in that traveling sidewalk absolutely free of charge. Ain't he a nice man? Well, Mr. Jones, you sure have took nice care of this place. Well, thank you, Mr. Clampett. Something my mother taught me. Never sell anything that isn't perfect, son. Especially if you sell it to a friend. Where's all them seats you was talking about? Oh, they, there's over here. But I think the best way to see them is from the stage. Why don't you all just follow me? Seats. Land of mercy. What do you think of that, Granny? Sure I would hate to whitewash all them benches. <laughs> Girl, this would sure be a dandy place for young ones. Never seen nothing better. <laughs> Jethro, you run up to them top seats way up yonder and see, can you hear me when I cut loose? Okay, Ma. You know, he ain't gonna jump off that stage here. There's a ten-foot drop and then water. <laughs> To Pete, Jasper. Hey, Ma, when you sing and yodel here, be careful about stepping off this here ledge. There's an awful deep puddle down there. Jasper, why can't you watch where you're going? Is he going to be all right? Yeah, that won't hurt Jethro none. His clothes will tighten up a little, but he'll dry out in no time. Well, Mr. Clampus, how do you like our bowl? <laughs> Right nice, Mr. Jones. Yeah, uh, by the way, I think it's time we dropped all these formalities. From here on in, why don't we just make it Jed and Henry? I thought you said your name was Harry. Harry Herbert. Yeah, uh, it is. Harry Herbert Henry. H H H Jones. My mother used to say those three H's stand for honesty, humility, and honor. But, uh, why don't you just call me what everybody else does? Honest Hank. That's a mighty dandy name, all right. One you can be proud of. Well, like I was starting to say, this is a mighty fine place here for whittling and yodeling, but I don't think it's any great shakes for hunting and fishing like you said it was. You know something, Jed? You're absolutely right. Just goes to prove how long I've been away from the hills. <laughs> but I got another piece of property not too far from here. It's the greatest spot for hunting you ever saw. Full of animals. And I'm going to sell it to you dirt cheap. It's called Griffith Park. Oh, yeah, named after my dear old mother. That's a mighty pretty name for a woman, Griffith Park. Thank you. Uh, Jed, why don't we take a run over there and have a look around? Well, that sounds like a mighty fine idea. Granny, Ellie Mae, Earl, we're all going over and looking at a piece of hunting property Mrs. Jones has got. Hank. Honest Hank. Well, that looks like somebody's throat a spell on her. Yeah, she acts like she's in some kind of a trance or something. Pearl. Pearl? Ain't Pearl? Pearl? Pearl! Pearl! Pearl? Pearl? Ain't Pearl? Pearl? Daydreaming. He's all going over to look at another place called Griffith Park. Does that mean you've decided against this one? No, I ain't decided nothing yet, Pearl. Come on, everybody, let's go. <laughs> Than I've ever seen in Armour Barn Bay. Going so fast. 
sure is good they're going the same way. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Because if one of them rascals decides to turn around and head back, there's going to be an awful mess. <laughs> no need to worry about that, boy. The car's going the other way or using that road over there. Where's all these folks going in such a hurry? Well, the ones using this road are going to Los Angeles. And the ones on that other road are coming back. Well, they just slow down a mite. The ones coming back could shout over to the ones going what they seen, and then maybe some of them wouldn't have to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good thought, Jay. Yes. Say, Ellie May. Hey, your daddy tells me you like animals. Sure do, Mr. Jones. I ain't never met one yet I couldn't make friends with. She's got a way with critters that is plumb amazing. I like that. I like that a lot. You know, I'll tell you folks what I'm going to do. Ellie Mae, if your papa buys Griffith Park, I'm going to throw in at no extra cost, mind you, my entire collection of fabulous animals from, from all over the world. I call it the Griffith Park Zoo. <laughs> Quite a big heart to Mr. Jones. Uh, honest act. Ain't this beautiful? Just like back home. Ain't smelt piney woods like that since we left home. Uncle Jed, you just gotta buy this. Well, we can build us a cabin in here and come hunting all the time. You ain't gonna shoot at my critters, are you? When you go hunting, Ellie, you gotta have something to shoot at. You leave my critters be. Ellie, I can't breathe. Ellie, me, turn him loose. Oh, if he hurts every one of my critters, I'll hit him on the jaw so hard he'll be able to look down his back and without even turning his head. Ellie, me, ain't nobody gonna do nothing to nobody or their critters. Size ain't ours yet. We ain't bought the place. How much you asking for this here Griffith Park, Mr. Jones? Uh, Hank, Pearl. Call me Hank. <laughs> All right, Hank. Never mind, old hand, Randy. Pearl, that's a sure trick of a crooked horse trader. So you won't look too close at the horse. Or listen too close to the price. <laughs> How much you all want for this here Griffith Park, Hank, honey? <laughs> Not a sign of anybody inside the house. Nor outside. Oh, well, we're probably worried about nothing. You know, the odds are a thousand to one against this confidence man singling out the Clambits, and even greater against them falling for it. You know, Chief, according to the circular, one of his favorite schemes is selling Hollywood Bowl. <laughs> Isn't that a wild one? Can you imagine anyone ignorant enough to actually... Hollywood Bowl? Hurry. <laughs> You old hound dog, what do you think of my collection of critters? I ain't never seen nothing like it in all my born days. Granny, how about that? If that don't beat all, a jackass with stripes. <laughs> <laughs> Granny, you ain't seen nothing yet to even got bobcats with stripes. But them rascals is so high and as long as from here, that pulls. Yeah, they what they call tigers. Cost me a heap of money, bring them all the way from India. <laughs> Mr. Jones, you ought to be ashamed. Putting all them critters in cages and pens. Don't you know critters like to be turned loose? Uh, now, now, you simmer down, Ellie. The only reason I put them in, in pens and cages is so your pa could look them over. See what he's buying. <laughs> I didn't want to have to have him go traipsing all through the brush. <laughs> nice for a minute, Ellie Mae. Well, I reckon. But turn them loose quick as you can. Yeah, I will. I will, Ellie. <laughs> That's a wonderful girl you got there. As a matter of fact, you got a wonderful family. My kind of people, his mother would say. Anybody seen Jethro? Jethro? Oh, it, it's awful hard to keep track of him amongst all these animals. <laughs> I didn't mean not the way it sounded. Of course, Jethro's a good-looking boy. Well, why shouldn't he be? His mother's so beautiful. <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. Ain't they funny-looking little fellers? <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you for staring. I told him I looked funny in a necktie. <laughs> that wild daughter of yours has jumped in with them bars. I seen her. She's in there with them big marmots coming on quick. <laughs> sure have been a hankering to meet up with you, fellas. Pa 
Paul says when his pa was a boy, there's lots of you fellas in the hills back home. But by the time I come along, you'd all gone away. Sure do like you. You're so nice and soft and furry. You're friendly, too. If my pa buys this here Griffith Park, I'll take you home with me. There's a heap more room there to roam around than you got here. There's some nice big trees for you and me to climb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't look. One hug from those powerful arms could kill you. Don't squeeze too hard, Ellie Mae. Mr. Jones is worried you might hurt his bear. All right, Pa. Get out the road, you crazy hillbilly! Yes, that pilot jumped off the freeway. Talk back to us that way. Uh, this road sure ain't very polite. They sound like me, a honking and a yelling like they. They had ought to be taught to drive with what you call courtesy. That means good manners. You got a wonderful idea there, young fella. And your Uncle Jed is just a man who can do it. Me? How? Well, if you owned this road, people would have to drive like you say. Is it for sale? Well, it, uh, it wasn't, but, uh, I've decided to make you a package deal. I'm going to sell you Griffith Park, the Hollywood Bowl, and the freeway that connects them. Tell you what, you come on home for supper with us, and we talk it out. Gethro, you stop at the Hollywood Bowl. I want to take another look at where I'm going to be performing. Okay, Ma. You and Mr. Jones go on inside and talk out your business. Jethro and Ellie Mae and me will be back directly. Well, where are you going, Granny? I'll tell you later. Jethro, drive around the back. We got a few things to pick up. Wonderful little woman. Reminds me for all the world of my sweet little gentle gray-haired old mother. <laughs> <laughs> Do you promise to drive with... What is it again, General? Courtesy. Yes. That means being polite to other folks driving. And not speeding or honking or yelling at them. We're cutting in and out of lanes. Over at school, they told us that causes accidents. Well, speak up. Do you promise? Yes, ma'am. No, so all right. Get back in your car and pass through. <laughs> Next! <laughs> Mr. Clavert, I hope we're not too late. We'd have been here sooner, but we had to avoid the freeway. There's an unbelievable jam up. <laughs> that Mr. Jones is a crook. I hope you didn't give him no money. Ah, oh, Pearl, I didn't give him no money. Well, where is he? Inside. And you know something? He ain't no mountain man. He can't hold his liquor worth shucks. Mr. Clappert, uh, how would you like to buy a city of San Francisco? <laughs> See what I mean? And he didn't have no more than half a jug. <laughs> Thank you.